Glen Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed. Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Welcome to Church. Old Brooklyn Christian Church. Today's sermon is called Lord of Lords because that's what Jesus is. He is the Lord of Lords and which means that there are all types of lords but he's the Lord of those lords. There's all you can make anything a lord but how many of you know Jesus is the Lord of whatever you can make as a lord. Even they had a competition with Elijah. They tried to see who could make fire come down from heaven. And they tried to make all types of uh, false gods their lords. But how many know they fell short? Even with Moses, they had all types of uh, ancient Egyptian lords that had a little bit of power, a little bit of impression. But they uh, threw their uh, staff on the ground. But Moses' lord ate their staff. Moses' snake ate their snakes. God's, our Lord is Lord of Lords. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for that. We serve Jesus who is the Lord of Lords. In other words, we're on the right team. That's team Jesus. The definition of Lord is one having power and authority over others. A ruler or hereditary right or preeminence to whom service and obedience are due. So when we're hearing that definition of what a Lord is, we have to question, is our Lord of Lords having that role in our life? Does Jesus have power and authority? Excuse me. Do we allow Jesus to have power and authority over us? Or do we want to run the show? Do we want to call the shots? Or do we allow him to have power and authority over us? He wants to be our Lord. That's what a Lord is. Jesus is supreme power. Jesus is supreme authority. And even the demons recognize his lordship. That's why when he came into contact with those demons, they said, Master, Master, have you come here to torment us? Can you please permit us to go into those pigs? But sometimes we have to recognize that the devil actually honors God more than we do sometimes. Because the devil looks in the spiritual realm and sees who God really is. But sometimes we're blinded by our flesh. We're blinded by our logic, blinded by our emotions. And God wants us to recognize who he really is and how much power and authority he actually has over us. And number two, it says a ruler, hereditary right, or preeminence. How many know God bought us with a price? It says that we are purchased with a price. And it says servants or obedience are due. Do we think of God as someone who our obedience is due to him. Our service is due to him. As an owner of a land. How many heard the term land lord? Over realty, realty, realtor, real property or realty. It says absolute, the male head of household. It says one that has achieved mastery or that exercises leadership or great power in some area. So someone can be a lord over anything. You can be a, a Lego lord. You can be a person that can make Legos like no one else. You can throw a bag of Legos at someone and they can put together a castle. They're a lord over those Legos. You could take a Rubik's Cube and you can lord over the Rubik's Cube. You have power over it. You have authority over it. You can be a lord on any type of thing. How many of you know whatever profession God gives you, whether it's making hamburgers, whether it's making eyeglasses, whether it's doing brain surgery, whether it's doing ministry, how many of you know God wants you to be a master at that what he gave you to do? He wants you to be the Lord over it. He wants you to have power and authority over that which he called you to do. Amen? He sent them out by twos to have 
ruler and authorityship over the devil. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 19, verses 16, it says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's Jesus Christ. How many of you know, how many of you know, we cannot have, check this out, we cannot have the blessings of God over our life without God lording in our life. You get that? You cannot obtain the blessings of God in your life if he is not a Lord in your life. See, a lot of times uh, people or Christians, we want to have the blessings of God. We want to have all the favor of God. We want to have all the nutrients and the tastiness of the Lord without allowing him to Lord over our house. But can I tell you that it's not going to work that way. God wants to lord over you. But when he lords over you, there's going to be blessings that are involved with that. Some will say, break it down to me. And I'm going to. Because the White House, right, if you live in the White House, there are some blessings that are involved in the White House. Now, I'm not talking about that they're politically correct in all that they do and they're making all the right choices and morality and they're worshiping Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about they have a butlers that will serve them in the White House. The president and those that live in the White House, they have all the fruit of the White House. They have uh, butlers that will serve them meals at any time. Uh, uh, President Obama can wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and say, he could just bit a, let out a big old yawn and say, you know what, I got a taste for a uh, lobster with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And bam, watch how quick they come out and bust out a red lobster and a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Uh, Michelle Obama could wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and say, I have a craving for German chocolate. And she can have it imported all the way from Germany, and she can have those benefits of that. How many know that there are people protecting and watching over the White House 24-7? They have the secret service that are watching. 20, even when they're sleeping, they're being watched over. How much greater is it when Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords? If you know that they have that type of treatment and they're being uh, the Lordship has all those blessings, how much more to the people of God? God said, I own a cattle and thousand hills. He owns it all. Though everything is the Lord's. It's all God's. And when we make him a Lord over our life, he opens up the kingdom to us. He opens up the kingdom to us. But see, we want the kingdom opened up without God telling us what to do. We want the kingdom opened up without God having authority over us. But how many of you know that he wants to have authority and rule over us, not because he's trying to oppress us, but actually he wants to bless us. He wants us to be free. He wants to watch over us. And he wants to protect us from the wiles of the enemy. Can I tell you the job of a parent is to lord over their child. To watch over it. To protect it. To provide for it. It's the same principle. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So right there, you don't need a PhD in theology to understand what that scripture is saying. It's in layman's terms. It's plain and simple where anybody who could under, uh, understand that right there. It's saying that we don't get into the kingdom of heaven by claiming that he's the Lord with lip service only, by just declaring only without having the corresponding works that connect to the faith. We have to walk the talk. How many know it's easier to talk 
the talk than it is to walk the talk. And God is looking at our walk. He likes our talk. It sounds good when people talk right. It sounds good. Just like when Brother Larry was talking about uh, Halloween, I said, go ahead, say it again. We had a good day in the optical, and someone was quoting the, uh, how much sales. I said, go ahead, say it again. One more time, I didn't hear you. A little bit louder. <laughs> when you hear good news, you want to hear it over and over. But how many know, just hearing it, God wants to see the corresponding action. If you say something, let me see it too. Let me see the fruit behind that which is saying. And so there's going to be people that say, Lord, Lord. In other words, they're calling Jesus Lord, but they're not allowing him to have power and authority over their own life. How many of you know Jesus and the, the Holy Ghost is a consuming fire? That means he wants to consume our life. He wants to take over our life. He doesn't want to just have a little part, a little section. He wants to consume our life. He wants to lord over. He wants to have power and authority over everything. How many of you know when you give yourself over to God, you're going to experience a freedom that you couldn't by resisting the authority of God. When you give yourself over to the spirit of God and give yourself over to the power of God, you'll experience a joy that you couldn't on your own. I've experienced I know it's true. And so here it says, not everyone says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This is Jesus speaking. It says, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not we prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name and perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. So in other words, as Christians, we need to not look for approval from other people based on the ministry that we do, but rather are we obeying God in our personal life? Are we obeying God in our private life? Because all of us can do ministry. God can uh, anoint us and enable us to cast out demons and to prophesy. And that's all through the Holy Ghost to edify the body of Christ. But that doesn't put a stamp of approval of God over our own life. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we have to look at that too as well. When I first became a Christian, this really threw me for a loop. I never thought that people could preach and teach and sing, but then not be saved or not have a real relationship with God. When I first saw that, that someone could be so skilled and gifted and talented in the church, but as soon as they left the church, they would act like a heathen. When I first saw that, boy, it really shook me up. I, I, it confused me because I didn't grow up in the church, so I didn't know what took place. And now, after uh, going uh, to church often, now uh, God will show us that we need to look for the fruit of the Spirit, not the gifts. The gifts are great, but the fruit tell us who we're dealing with. We need to look for peace, love, joy, self-control, meekness. Those are what we look for so that we know who we're dealing with. Just because someone can pray, pray, just because someone can preach, just because they can teach, just because they can cast out demons and prophesy, that's all right. But we still don't know what, what we're dealing with or who we're dealing with, but just looking at those things alone. Amen? And how many know by knowing this, you can avoid a whole world of trouble? Amen? The Bible says in John chapter 2, verses 1, it says, On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Look at Jesus' response to his mother. Woman. I'm going to tell you, in this day and age that we live right now, Call someone woman and see what happens to you. You better be prepared to duck afterwards. And I can see like the language behind it. You know, someone coming up and questioning, woman? 
I can see it. Woman. Jesus was acknowledging that, hey, you're my mother, but I'm the Lord of Lords. You birthed me into this world. God used you, but you're still flesh and blood. And I am divinity. Jesus was saying, I am the Messiah. Yes, I have flesh and blood, but I am the Son of God, Jesus was telling his mother. Woman? How many of you know sometimes we need to be reminded of who we are? See, sometimes we think that we're greater than we really are outside of God. And we need God to check us every once in a while. See, even if you're a pastor, you could think that you're greater than you really are. You're just a flesh and blood, a vessel that God uses, but you're not a Lord. You're all to be servants. And we have to keep that in mind. Sometimes we get the big head. We get beside ourselves. We think we're greater until God says, Woman? I got one. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Do you know what his mother was saying? This is actually one of the first miracles that Jesus performed in his ministry. And this is a pivotal moment in time right now because his mother is now transitioning from seeing Jesus Christ as just her son to now she's seeing him as the Lord of Lords. And she's recognizing his lordship. She's recognizing his power. She's recognizing his authority. And she's remembering that his birth was supernatural. She's remembering her past. She's remembering what God has already done in her life. And sometimes when we remember what God has already done in our life, we remember where God has already brought us through and to, we can remember easily who Jesus is over our life. Oh, that's right. You are the Lord. But not just any Lord, you are the Lord of Lords. Because I've had all types of Lords before you that failed me. But you are the lords of those lords. I once had marijuana as my lord. I once had a woman as my lord. I once had money as my lord. But all these lords have failed me. So now I need the lords of lords to take me a little farther where God wants me to be. Amen? Do whatever he tells you. So not only is she recognizing that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and that uh, she's passing on his Lordship to other people. You get that? See, God wants us to recognize as Jesus Christ as the Lord of Lords, but he wants us to pass on his Lordship to other people. In other words, we should get other people to obey the Lord and do what God tells us to do. It's one thing when you get God to, to, to allow you to be led by him, but it's another thing when you share with other people for them to do what God wants them to do too. So not only will you be blessed, but those who you speak to will be blessed too as well. Amen? Amen. In John 2, 6, it says, Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for cer ceremonial washing. Each holding from 20 to 30 gallons, Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim, and then he took them, and now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And then it says in John chapter 2, verses 8, it says, He told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted at the water 
that had been turned into wine, and he did not realize where it had came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside. See, sometimes when we allow God to lead us and to do things that we normally wouldn't do, we'll experience blessings from God that we're aware of that other people are not aware of. Just like these people, they were instructed by God and what to do. They knew what God was doing, but the king of the host, he didn't know what God was up to. And I'm going to tell you, not everything that God does in your life, he's not going to call you to share everything with everyone all the time. Sometimes there's a moment in time that God will have you to share things with. I'm going to tell you, there was a time where I knew someone, a good Christian person, for 12 years. And I give my testimony all the time. I have my testimony on uh, the internet. It's on cable TV. It's on uh, YouTube. Uh, I've shared it like from random people at the grocery store that I've only met after two seconds. But there was one person in my life that God did not have me share it with until 12 years later. 12 years later that this person was going through a hardship, a really rough time in his life, and that was the moment in time where God opened up the door for me to share my testimony with him, and it blessed him, it comforted him, and then he was able to share his testimony with. See, God has a perfect timing for everything. Had I have shared the testimony like a robot the first year that I met him, maybe I wouldn't have had any more ammunition or anything else. See, God God has a timing for the way that he does things. And it's ultimately for our good. The Bible says in John chapter 2 verses 10, it says, and he said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. So in other words, they bring out the, the best wine while people are sober and they're aware and conscious and their taste buds are, and their palates of their mouth are extra sensitive. But after they get to a point when they're drunk, they could be drinking gasoline if all they care. They don't care what it is. If it's hot, give it to me. If it's uh, got a buzz to it, give it to me. You just get, you know, when you get to a state of mind, you don't care anymore. But how many of you know God gets better and better and better? He starts off good. But as you grow with him, he tastes better and sweeter as you grow with him. Just like fine wine as it matures, as it gets older. See, when your relationship grows with God, it develops and matures like fine wine. But it's the wine of God. It's even better than the man's wine. Amen? Amen. I got one. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And it says, what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Can I tell you, when you have a real walk with God, when you have a, a boldness of a lion and Jesus Christ is real in your life and you're willing to set your personal gain aside, for the glory of God, when you're willing to put your selfishness aside for the glory of God, when you're willing to put what you want to do aside to make him Lord over your life, can I tell you it will be a strong witness to those around you. And see, sometimes I hear a lot of times parents will say, um, I want my children to go to church. And I think to myself, how could they ever go to church when they don't see you go to church? If you want your children to go to church, you go to church and they'll start to follow what you do. People listen to what you say, but they take heed to what you do. They really listen to what you do even more. They hear what you say, but they listen to what you do. So if you want your family to be blessed, you want your children to be blessed, you want them to hear the word of God, but you don't hear the word of God. Allow God to be the Lord of lords over your life, and then people will follow. And I'm going to tell you this. When you allow God to be the Lord of lords, things are going to happen in your life. God will perform miracles in your life. There will be powerful testimonies that will draw people. I shared the testimony last Sunday that after we left the church, I rolled down the windows 
and someone uh, was set up on the side of the road on Broadview right across the street and my wife rolled up the window at the last second and some little kid threw a, a apple so hard we were doing 40 miles per hour and the apple would have hit right where her head was. But if not for the Lord of Lords. How many of you know the Lord of Lords is in control? He's in control of the car. He's in control of our thoughts. How many of you know the Lord of Lords gave my wife a thought to roll up the window? Yeah. He's in control. Is God, Jesus Christ, is he the Lord of Lords over your thoughts? Is he the Lord of Lords over your heart? Is he the Lord of Lords over your emotions? Do you allow God to govern every area of your life? Or do you allow certain areas of your life to run rogue? Because that area of your life that you don't allow God to lord over is going to be the area of your life where you're going to allow the devil to come in and hit you with fiery darts and suffering and pain is going to be established that God did not intend. The Bible says in John chapter 14, verses 15, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. And to help you, and to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him, nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. So you hear Jesus Christ saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. And the most logical, reasonable question would say, well, what is his commandments? In John chapter 14, verses 18, it says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. So that natural body, that natural flesh that Jesus rented for a moment, the world could see that. Even the enemies of God could see that. The devils could see that. People who didn't want nothing to do with God could see that. People that wanted to crucify him on the cross could see that. Judas Issachariot who betrayed Jesus could see that. But he's saying that body that they saw, it's going to be gone. The world's not going to see that anymore. But even though his body gone, you'll still see me. Because he's sending us the comfort of the Holy Ghost. How many of you know when we have the Holy Ghost inside of us, other people could still see Jesus? They could see Jesus through us. They could see Jesus through our life. Because I live you will also live. On that day you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whosoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will, by, will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and show myself to them. And again, Jesus is telling people to keep my commands. First he said, keep my Father's commandments. Now he's saying, keep my commands. What is Jesus' commandments? The same as his Father's commandments. Jesus said, I don't do nothing on my own. I don't say nothing that I want to say. I do everything that I hear my Father in heaven Old say. Old Brooklyn Christian Church, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to release the oppressed old Brooklyn Christian Church <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.